Hey, welcome back to our series on the Thunder Nova 63. We're going to compare the last laser I was using before I got the Nova. This is an OM Tech. It used to be Orion Motor Tech. So if you see an OM Tech machine on any website or, or video, it used to be Orion Motor Tech. Now they've rebranded. We're going to go over a lot of things with this machine, basically what you can expect from a Chinese machine that does not have a distributor here in the United States that will give you customer support, and the build quality, and basically what you can expect from this machine compared to a Thunder machine, which I have in the other room, and, and we'll go over that next. Uh, compare them directly. We're not going to go too much into... 60 watt versus 130 watt because I think that's pretty self-explanatory um, but we'll tell you some of the speed differences and, and go from there. First of all the case is steel the same as the Thunder but what I don't like about this machine right out of the gate is they colored it a dark color everywhere and this machine came with just a little bitty light in the back and I had to replace, not replace, but I had to add that uh, LED strip on the inside so that you could see something. Now, I'll disconnect that uh, LED strip for you so you can see the difference if I don't have that on. This right here, you'll see as it boots up, See that light in the back? That's all you get. So, what I did was I just stuck some, some LED lights inside that turn on when I turn my power strip on and now I can actually see inside. Um, it could have been a lighter color to reflect the light a little more and you'll see that in the other machine. Uh, they did that pretty effectively. The, the way they mounted everything in here. This is plexiglass with just some screws put on it um, and it flexes pretty good and it just seems a, a little cheaper than the other one. It's got plastic hinges everywhere. The handle mounts are plastic. The pass-through slot latches are plastic and it's got a lot of play because of that and imagine if you mess with them a lot that uh, that they would fail on you the biggest issue i had with this machine is for one repeatability uh, precision repeatability i could run probably 10 cutting boards on this machine and then due to the way that these belts are made uh, eventually you can only tighten them so much and then they'll start to inherently slip on you just a tiny bit and you'd have to start you'd have to reposition your jig and do do your cutting board based on your new uh, point of reference this belt in the bottom that's supposed to make the z-axis go up and down broke and I reached out to OM Tech for a new belt. They sent me a new belt, it was the wrong size. They said, we didn't carry the size belt for your machine anymore. And what they suggested, and if you look down here in the bottom, is that I drill a new hole so that the belt will fit. And they gave me measurements to move it over. And that didn't work because as you can see, if I move this handle, doesn't move anything. What I have to do now is put tension on this belt and move it. And that'll move <laughs> the the uh, the bed up the z-axis bed up and down. Because the teeth are not the same uh, distance apart in this belt as the original belt that was on this machine. So not only did they send me the wrong size, but they sent me the wrong teeth per inch or teeth per centimeter they called it on the belt so that was the biggest thing and that's that's 
uh, what led to me looking for a new machine ultimately was uh, this, when I turn this, this corner is directly tied to this, so it goes up and down. None of these other corners go up and down unless I hold that belt and occasionally I have to measure each corner because the bed gets out of alignment uh, because that belt's not working correctly. The other thing I didn't like is there's no parts tray. Now, I ended up fabricating a parts tray eventually that fit in there. Uh, and I could pull this bottom part out here and pull the parts tray out and get my stuff. But it just sat on there. Not, I had to pull it out before I could move the belt up and down because it sat right on the belts. And it, it was just a little gangly. These uh, hinges are really hard to, oh, yeah. now that I'm trying to show you that they're a pain, they actually locked in, but those are finicky. The caster lock broke off of a couple of the wheels. As you can see, it's missing on that wheel. It's there on that wheel. The good of this machine is it's a workhorse. Everything else was fine except for that belt. Uh, it still has a Ruida controller in it. The, the uh, Thunder Lasers use a Ruida controller. This one's an older firmware, older controller, but it works. This machine came with RD Works instead of uh, a license for a light burn like the Thunder did, and that software is a pain. So I'm uh, using, when I was using this machine, I used a uh, uh, light burn for it as well. The cooling system in this machine is, is water cooled just like the Thunder Laser CO2 machines, but it came with nothing. It didn't come with a pump, it didn't come with a cooler, and I had to buy those separate. I ended up paying close to $700 for that cooler, and as you can see, it's on 77 degrees. It doesn't work anymore, and that's why we're not going to do any cutting on this machine today. But uh, 700 bucks more plus a little fish tank pump to, to, uh, to operate it. So no, oh, and, uh, no accessories or anything like that, no tools or anything to operate the machine. When I needed that belt, I had to go back and forth with their support in China. And it took me three weeks to get that belt. It took two days in between conversations because of course their nighttime is our daytime and it was a pain and obviously I can't get any parts anymore because uh, the stuff that they send me isn't for this machine anymore and this machine was only five six years old uh, when I got it maybe maybe seven years old so uh, that's just not not good on their part yeah, this machine came with this little focus uh, block, I guess you'd call it. Just a little piece of plexiglass that tells you what the focus distance is. A key and the machine. And that's it. <laughs> so that's the OM Tech 60 watt machine. And for reference, I can cut uh, eighth inch or three millimeter plexiglass on this machine at 14 millimeters per second and we'll talk about that the difference in the other machine when we go over to the thunder this is the nova 63 you've seen it in my uh, prior videos but we're going to compare the same things from the om tech machine on this machine first of all the light bright paint on this machine gives you all kinds of light inside the machine. The lighter colors reflect the light. It's a lot better, you can see better. It came with adequate lighting inside and uh, their smaller machines are the same way. They're all white so that the light reflects and you get nice lighting inside your machine and you can see what you're doing. Uh, the parts on it are anodized instead of powder coated at least they appear to be, 
they look like they're a lot better quality than the machine in the other room. Just just the, the fittings and the connectors and the way the belts are connected. It's just night and day when you look at it. Now, the focus laser dot that comes through and tells you where your first cut's going to be. On this machine, it goes through a one-way mirror and actually goes through the lens right where your laser's going to hit. On the other machine, it's got a laser pointer that's mounted on the outside with a little arm and you got to adjust it and it could get thrown off if you bump it or if the head bumps something. With this one, it's back there contained and it goes through the mirrors itself and there's nothing extra so you can mount other accessories on it like this air assist that comes from the side so I can do projects that and it blows away the, the soot and smoke. <clears throat> The other thing right away, everything's metal hinges, there's gaskets between the glass and the metal. It's just, just the, the seams are better, the build quality is just amazing on this machine. You can push on it, but uh, it doesn't just fall out if you push hard, like the other machine. It has a key that fits everything. And if you notice the difference between this and the other machine, the other machine just had a, a hollow piece. This one actually has a special, I want to say, air effects so that when you're when the air is being pulled in it's going through this louver first and it makes it so it goes across the top of the work surface and back to the exhaust which is in the back of the machine on this one the OM exhaust is on the side of the machine and uh, When the air comes in the machine, it naturally goes this way, and then the exhaust on the other machine has to pull it out. And uh, there's nothing to guide it really other than the holes in the machine. This one actually has effects that make it go to the back inside the um, pass-through slot. You can see these vents right there where the air comes in and goes straight to the back. The, Casters are built really well. I uh, showcased that in one of my other videos where you could just push this uh, huge heavy machine with just one hand and slide it across a, a flat floor. There's the uh, OM Tech also does, didn't have the legs that come down so that you can stabilize your machine. This one I can't push it anywhere when those legs are down. The OM Tech didn't come with that. And whenever I have an issue with this machine, Thunder Laser is right here in Texas. I can message them on Facebook. I can send them an email. I can call them and talk to a human during normal business hours, not middle of the night. And it's just a huge asset to be able to say, hey, the camera I just bought uh, can you walk me through and they'll walk you through doing stuff. They have a uh, weekly webinar that I can just get on there and ask questions and there's people that have been using these machines for a while uh, and they, they'll, they're very helpful. Every week at Thursday, Thursday at like 3 o'clock, you can get on there and ask them questions. Whereas with the OM Tech Machine, you're out of luck. You can get in a forum or a a Facebook group or something and if you're lucky you find somebody that's helpful but it's not their job to be whereas with Thunder Laser they have people who uh, make it a point to help and they're employees of the company and, and they help you out. Uh, I like the armed and, and disarmed 
light in the back that tells you when the laser is cutting and when it's not. Uh, from time to time, if I'm doing a big job, I'll just keep an eye on it every 30 seconds or so, look over at it if I'm at the computer. And all I have to do is look at that light and I can tell it's still cutting. I can see through the lenses that there, or the, the windows that there's no nothing out of the ordinary going on. But when that light turns green again, or it's red when it's cutting, when that light turns green again, I know it's done cutting. I can come over and check on my stuff. And that's a neat feature that OM Tech doesn't offer. Um, the laser arm switch is on the side and it uh, is separate from your uh, key switch which is on the side also on this machine whereas the OM Tech it's all built into one so if that fails you've got uh, both your laser arming switch and your power switch are, are gone and you got to uh, figure it out this one has high and low air assist and that's built into Lightburn software as well. So I can send something to this machine and say, I don't want it to have high air, I want it to have low air because I'm engraving. Uh, and then if I'm cutting, I want the air assist, I can tell it I want high air, and that's all done through the software. But OM Tech doesn't offer that. This has the built-in controller, and you can test it by pushing one of these buttons. That's for your uh, low volume. And then you can test your high volume, and it all comes out through the hose that's in there. I've connected my air compressor to this one, so I get more air volume going through the air assist. And that's a really neat feature, the, the different high and low air. Um, I guess that's everything as far as the performance goes. Obviously, it's a, it's a bigger bed, and... The honeycomb bed comes with this machine, but underneath this honeycomb bed, you can see the knives under there. This also has a knife bed. So you lift this off if you're wanting to cut and have the parts fall through. Oh, that was the other thing, the parts tray. This is amazing. Check this out. You want to retrieve your parts, you open this up, take your parts out. When you're using the knife bed, they'll fall through. And then when you want to go back to etching or you don't want things to fall through, you put your honeycomb bed back in. The OM Tech machine only came with the knife bed, with the knives that you can uh, move over and adjust. This one came with both. Um, and that's a, a, a huge feature as well. That about wraps it up. And I uh, hope you enjoyed watching. And in our next video, we're going to go over the, the camera and see how easy it is to put in. And we're also going to hook the machine up to the Mac and uh, use a uh, Raspberry Pi computer to hook it up over the network. But thanks for watching.